there, it's Cynthia. I wanted to talk today about how to tell when you've got a story or when you've just got a list of events. A lot of times when you're starting out writing a story, you will likely be thinking in almost a chronological manner. You might be thinking, well, okay, I'm going to have this happen, then this, then this, and there's a bunch of and then this happened and then this happens. At what point though, does it seem like it's just a list of events? And at what point does it seem like you've got a story? Let's take a look at the board. On the board, I put down some blue boxes. The first one says, and I'm just going to use an example. I'm going to say it's you. You were born, let's say, in 1985, kindergarten in 1990, high school came around in 1998, then college came around in 2002. You graduated from college in 2006, you got married in 2010, you had your first child in 2012, your second child in 2016, you divorced in 2018, you had your first TV series in 2020, and you won your first Emmy in 2021. That sounds pretty exciting, right? But is there really a story here? Hmm. Well, at the moment, the progression comes across like a list of events. It's one event after another. It might be someone's life story. It might be your life story. And in this case, let's assume it's your character's life story that you're writing about. The issue here is it doesn't really feel as though there's too much dimension to it that someone objective on the outside can really relate to. What if I'm a person who doesn't care to win an Emmy Award? Why am I watching this character? As a writer, I haven't given my audience a reason why they really would care. Let's take a look at adding some components to this list of things that will help bring this more to life. 1987, mom dies. 1995, dad remarries. 2000, stepmom dies. 2008, dad remarries. 2011, stepmom dies. Let me see over here. 2013, dad remarries. 2019, you guessed it, stepmom three dies. Midway through 2020, dad remarries, which basically coincides with when you won your first Emmy Award. 2023, you go to jail. Now do we have a story? Hmm, it's getting a little bit more interesting, isn't it? When I had presented this in class, I had one student raise her hand and said, well, you went to jail because you killed dad. I actually thought that was really funny because that wasn't what I was thinking. I was actually thinking that you went to jail because dad framed you into letting people think that you had killed all your stepmoms. However this goes, what has happened now versus what was on the page prior, the additions have solicited and brought out my imagination. As your audience, I am now making these assumptions in my mind. I'm now relating to your story. I'm now thinking through how, what this must have been like for you. I've built a sympathy towards you as a character. I've looked at you and thought, wow, this person lost their mom at age two. That must have been tragic. Oh my gosh, they had a stepmom, but then the stepmom passed away. What must that have been like? Then they had a second stepmom, but wait, this next stepmom even passed away. That's odd. And then the next one and so on. So this is now built into it all, the sense of a curiosity. It is the idea of what's happening, what's really going on below the surface. It has brought out my imagination as your audience. It's also engaged me and connected me to your main character because it's built a sympathy. It has made the character more human. And as a human being on the flip, on the other side watching as your audience, 
I'm now relating to these very human potential emotions that your main character might be going through. Now we've got a story. So when you're looking at how to write your story, and let's say the only things that are coming to mind are a chronological list of events, don't forget to add the human elements, connectivity that is human, a sympathy, a sense of curiosity, and almost more important than anything else, the sense of it bringing out your audience's imagination. Once you've brought out your audience's imagination, now you know you've got a story. So keep writing, keep creating, and I'll see you in the next video.